Hey everybody, Kathy at North Star Prep Stutter. Well, you can see my garden is done. It is towards the end of October and it has been done for a little while. I was able to pull everything out as you saw in my last video. Uh, the tomatoes are almost completely ripened now, so I need to do something with them to process them. They're nice and red and ripening. And I have a lot of them over here. Still a few green ones, but plenty of red ones to be processing at this point. So you're wondering what I'm gonna do with them? Well, I've already made a couple batches of V8 juice, and that's what I'm gonna do with this one too. I just wanted to make sure my process was good, the taste was good before I showed you guys. So here is my V8 juice, and it is very customizable to whatever you have in your garden. I'm just gonna use whatever I have available to me. So I'm starting out by just cutting them into chunks. I core them, cut off any bad spots there might be, and then just to do some nice chunks. These tomatoes are beautiful, and these were green before. Maybe a little light green. Some of them had a little blush going, but they still ripen very nicely inside. So I'm just putting them all in a big bowl at this point. I did not peel them or seed them. I'm just putting them in as chunks. It's the quickest way right now. I cut them into chunks is so that if there are any hidden bad spots in here I will be able to find them right away. Now I also have some uh, Brad's Tomic grape tomatoes and some others that were a different variety that grew off of one plant. I don't know what they are. They're not the Atomic grapes. They're very much a green tomato but these are ripe. Um, some of them got really big and crossed with the Atomics, but um, anyway, I'm not sure the variety, but they're soft, so I know that they're, they're all ripe and okay to eat. Now you can certainly add whatever tomatoes in there that you want. You can put in orange and yellow and you know pear tomatoes, red tomatoes, uh, cherry tomatoes. If you want to do a whole batch of cherry tomatoes, you can do really whatever you want. And you can combine them so that you've got a lot of different flavors going on there. But this is a great recipe for the end of the year gardening when you've got all these bits and pieces of all, all different kinds of vegetables that need to go in there and just making a juice out of them. I think that's probably how it got started in the first place. So this is what the brads look like when they're ripe. They change color, they, they kind of get um, a gold streaks in with the purple and the green, but then they're kind of a, a dark golden green with a little bit of a purple tint inside. Very juicy and very flavorful. Okay, well, guess what? I have enough tomatoes for a quadruple batch, and that means four batches worth. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put together for you for filming one batch while I'm doing three more batches at the same time. So um, it's already getting dark <laughs> here in Minnesota with winter coming on. So the lighting is not going to be that great, so you can see where I'm, I'm trying to get some under counter light here. But because I had, well, I started out with like 40 pounds of tomatoes and I ended up with 32 completely cut up. And the recipe called for eight tomatoes, or eight pounds, six to eight pounds, somewhere in there. So I easily have <laughs> a, a quadruple batch, a little more than I thought I was gonna have. It calls for two and a half to three cups of carrots all cut up. Now, when you're, since I'm juicing them to can and everything, I don't want the peels on them because I don't want any dirt and possibilities or bacteria in there. So I would have to peel all those carrots. Um, I need, for a quadruple batch, I need 12 cups of cut up carrots. It's already, like I said, getting dark and I don't want to be 
I've, I've got the carrots from my garden, but I just don't have the energy right now to be peeling enough for 12 cups of cut up carrots. That's a lot of carrots to peel. So I just went and bought a bunch of baby carrots um, because they're not going to be fermented. They're not going to be doing anything. They're just adding, they're adding nutrients and flavor and bulk really is what they're doing, the juice in there. So um, I'm totally okay with it. Um, some of you might not be and that's fine. That's fine. I've already got so much juice already canned with everything from the garden that I'm okay if this part doesn't have everything from the garden. Mostly I'm just trying to get rid of all my tomatoes <laughs> and just trying to get this done. Dehydrating them is taking forever. I mean it's taking me like 36 hours and they're still kind of bendy and everything and they'll all be rotten by the time I can get them dehydrated. So I'm just going with it. I first so. want to show you what 32 pounds of cut up tomatoes look like. Now these are like the biggest Tupperware bowls that you can get. So I'm just going to, in the batch I'm going to do with you, I'm just going to mix from all three bowls here. All right, what I've got from my eight vegetables for V8 juice, and if nobody knows what, why they called it V8 juice is because they had eight different vegetables in there. So what I have are my tomatoes, one head of celery, which is a package like this. So you put the entire thing in, yep, the whole thing. So I already got them washed and trimmed, so I'm just gonna dice them up. Then um, two and a half to three cups of carrots, two large bell peppers. Um, you can use, and this is just what I had, you can use all red peppers, you can use yellow peppers, orange peppers, you can use hot peppers if you want to. If you like a spicier V8, you can certainly do that. So right now I just have these two sweet peppers and that's what I'm gonna use. And you want two medium to large onions. And then if you have fresh parsley, go ahead and put that in. Otherwise dried works okay too because we're gonna be cooking it all into the sauce. And then basil. And again, if you want um, fresh basil, the flavor would be just incredible. Right now I don't have any fresh basil because everything's dead in the garden. So this is what I have to work with at this point. And now this happens to be parsley that I dried. I just used the same container in here, but that's my homegrown parsley in there. As I cut up everything, I'm just gonna throw it in the stock pot. This is a 10 quart. Um, I have a 20 quart coming, but it's not here yet. So anyway, in my 10 quart, what I'm gonna do is make sure that all of the ingredients that I need fill up to about the seven to eight quart line. And so when they fill up to that, that will be enough for processing what I need. I'll do these carrots. Now because I'm gonna put these in my pressure cooker, not my canner, my pressure cooker, my instant pot, and that's just to get things done faster. And then I don't have to tend to it. I don't have to watch it all the time. I could, because these are baby carrots, I could just put those in, but I'm gonna chop them up a little bit more just for the sake of being able to put them through a food mill later on. That's why I want these cut up just a little bit smaller. So the purpose of cooking them first is going to be to get them all soft so that it will turn into juice much easier. If you have a juicer I would still recommend cooking them a little bit first just because it'll make it easier to juice them. Just going to chop them into pieces here. Then they will also cook down more quickly too. Now if you don't like any of these vegetables, you know, or you're allergic to them, you can certainly keep them out. So the essential flavors really are the tomatoes, celery, carrots, onions, and peppers. And then whatever flavors you add in after that are, um, are kind of bonus, really. Okay, and the peppers, you can just leave them in kind of big chunks because they will get plenty soft. I'm sure this would taste probably really good with a, with a jalapeno in here or something like that. And if you get some seeds in there, it's really not a big deal because we're gonna be straining all that out later. 
Now the onions, you do want to dice up a little bit smaller just because it'll be easier to run it through the food mill. So something like that is just fine. Okay, now that, now that I've, I'm done crying from all those onions and changed out the battery in my camera, um, just want to tell you that you can add whatever you want to. The essentials are the onions, carrots, and the different things like that. Um, but if you want to throw in kale if, or spinach or um, I wouldn't do squash, but any of the other greens, spinach, kale, um, like I said, fresh parsley, fresh basil, any kind of flavor basil you want, uh, lime basil in there would be great, Thai basil. Um, you know, just kind of make it your own, uh, things that you really enjoy doing. And so that would be great. All right, back to the pot. See, I've got all of these ingredients in here. I'm just gonna give them a stir, kind of mix them around. They really are so pretty. Peppers, onions, carrots, celery. Yeah, they're really nice in there. And these measurements I'm giving you are just for one batch, even though I'm doing four. <laughs> it's just for one batch. Okay, for parsley, you would put in a fourth a cup of fresh chopped up parsley. But I'm using dried, and this is homegrown dried. And so I'm just gonna put in one tablespoon and same with the basil. A fourth a cup of fresh chopped up basil. And I'm using a, a tablespoon of dried. Although never too much basil in something, right? Then we've got one tablespoon of salt. You can use um, a sea salt, a Celtic sea salt. I just am using the Himalayan pink salt right now, but a tablespoon of that. Might seem like a lot, but it goes a long way. And this is not nearly as salty as the V8 juice that you buy in the store. Okay, then we need one teaspoon of black pepper. I'll put the recipe in the description below. Then you're gonna want two bay leaves, and these you will take out before you can, but we'll put those in now. So two dried bay leaves, two tablespoons of sugar. You can use raw sugar if you want. I just, I saved that for other things. And this just helps to cut the acidity when you're drinking this of the tomatoes. And then you want one tablespoon of coconut aminos. Uh, this is in place of soy sauce. If you are able to do soy and you want to do that, um, that's fine. I'm not able to do soy and some of my family can't either. So coconut aminos is an excellent substitute. It tastes just like soy sauce. It's just made from coconuts. Okay, so one tablespoon, and then half a cup of lemon juice. You wanna use the bottled lemon juice for canning things. Now this will make it so that you will not have to add lemon juice to each jar of tomato juice when you're canning. Okay, so those are all the other ingredients that need to go in. Just gonna stir these all up and then add our tomatoes. Just want to make sure I get everything in here. I think this is an eight quart bowl, I think. I'm not sure. But, um, now these tomatoes have been sitting for a couple hours because it took me a while to process through everything. So you can see they're already getting some juice in there and you want to be able to get that in there. I'm gonna save these for another batch. But I wanna get a few of these Brad's Atomic Grape tomatoes in here. Kind of mix them up with some of the, the batches here. So one of the reasons I don't wanna fill this all the way to the top is because I need to mix this around here. Because when I put it in my Instant Pot, I want to make sure I've got equal amount of veggies mixed in here. All right, it's already smelling great. Okay, I'm going to pour this in here. Now because there's already the lemon juice and uh, some tomato juice already, and it's going at it, 
I don't need to add any water to it. So there'll be no need to add liquid. Okay, so you can see how full I have it. Uh, there is um, a max line right here. I do not want to go over it because this will juice and kind of expand a little bit. So you don't want to overfill. I put my cover on, make sure that the uh, silicone gasket is in and turn it to lock it. Make sure that's on seal. I'm gonna plug it in, put it on manual for 18 minutes. It'll take a while to get it up to pressure because a lot of these vegetables are chilled. It's pretty dense in there and full, so don't have any worries about that. Sorry about the lighting, guys. It's just the incandescent bulbs do this at night when it's dark out. All right, it is, that batch is in. I'm gonna continue cutting things up and filling up this other pot. So I'm just gonna cut more and fill up this pot. And then I'm gonna put this on the stove and just let it cook down. And by then, that should be done because it will take a while for it to, to depressurize. You will need to do a natural release on it. Because I have four batches to do, I'm gonna have a lot of things done and cooked up and it's going to take a while. I may even have to go two days on this. I will be back with you when I'm ready to strain it to put through the food mill and uh, show you what to do with that. All right, I'm back. It is the next day. Um, I'm going to show you how much I ended up getting out of all of this. Right now it's still the whole mixture of vegetables and I left it in here just to cool off. But you can see the vegetables are all very soft and there's a lot of liquid. I just kept it sealed up so it would be okay. On the stove, I've got probably six quarts in here in my 10 quart stock pot. All the vegetables are all cooked down and softened. And then in my large roaster, this baby is full. Full to almost to the brim here. And these are all cooked down. I cooked them at about 250 for maybe, I want to say, four hours. I just turned it off and let it just cool off. So right now, this one is just down to barely warm. So the next step I'm going to do is to juice all of these. Now there are a number of different ways you can do this. You can use a juicer, you can use a food mill, you can use a strainer a fine mesh strainer so that you can get just the juice and no seeds or pulp or anything like that. So you can use a variety of things. Today I'm going to use a juicer because it's just easier for me and I happen to have one so I'm just going to run it through. It is a centrifugal juicer and it's great for making nut milks and other juices and everything. And then the liquid comes out this end. So the solids out this end, the liquid out here. And all I have to do is keep putting in the top it'll go around and separate it if you have a tomato uh, processing separator you can use that too that'll work out great now this is a cold press and so one of the reasons I had to let everything cool down was because I can't put hot liquids in here it'll ruin my machine all right so we're gonna start with my instant pot I'm gonna take the inside out set it here and then I'm gonna put this aside and I've got a container that I'm going to have to put all the juice in. Okay, because it has such a large um, supply of tomatoes and I had to separate them out into different containers to cook them down, all my seasonings are off balance. So what I need to do is get all the juice into one container and stir it up and combine it. And I'm hoping that they will all fit in the roaster. So right now I'm just gonna put them in different pots and try it that way. So here we go, I'm gonna turn on my juicer and I'm just gonna start loading things in here. Okay, once this is full, I'm just going to dump it into here. You see it's got this beautiful color that's all combined of everything. Now it's thinner than the V8 juice that you buy at the store. So, you know, depending on how much I get at the end, I may end up cooking it down a little bit to thicken it. 
so I don't have to use as many jars. That's always a thought at this point. Spells the solids at this end. So this is how much juice I got out of the instant pot. I would say it's probably close to four quarts, maybe three and a half quarts of juice. Now there are like some seasonings and things that came through. If you don't like that, go ahead and strain it through some cheesecloth again for yourself. I don't mind it. I don't mind all of the little bits in there. So you can see how much pulp was expelled out of that whole thing of, of the Instant Pot. I would say it's maybe uh, two thirds of a cup at the most that has come out of the entire pot. And I've got that pot empty. So now I'm just gonna keep going with the rest of what I have and keep juicing and storing it in containers. All right, that container is full. That one holds 22 cups. I'm starting on this bowl that holds 32 cups and this is full so I'm going to pour that into here. Now this is much thicker because like I said it was from the stock pot that had a lot more of just the, the other ingredient veggies and not as many tomatoes in here. It also produced a lot more of the waste here and it is moister and what I could do is run this back through and extract more, more of the liquid but seriously, I'm gonna have enough juice. <laughs> so this is just gonna go in my compost. If you have chickens or any other animals, they would absolutely love this. Okay, so out of the single recipe, I got the 22 cups in here. I wanna say two quarts, maybe a quart and a half in here. So 22 cups is five and a half quarts and another half, so maybe six, yeah, about six quarts of juice that I'm getting out of here, out of a single batch. So when I canned it before, I got about seven quarts. Um, another time I got eight and a half. So it all depends on how juicy your tomatoes are, how juicy everything else is, how long you cook it, all that kind of stuff. So it's gonna vary on how much you get. Point is to just cook everything down and then strain it out and you've got your juice. So I'm done with the Instant Pot and I'm done with the stock pot from the stove and now I'm going to the roaster. All the stuff that's in there. <laughs> it is way too heavy for me to lift out so I'm going to be scooping out a bowl of it and putting it in the sink here and just using that. Okay, so I got all three of these huge bowls filled with juice, like up to the top here. And I think the total was around 65 cups, 64, 65, 66, right in there. So if it were 64, uh, there's four cups to a quart. So that would be 16 quarts of juice that I'll be getting, which is gonna be two cannerfuls. <laughs> That's a lot of juice. What I'm doing right now, the batch in the Instant Pot was a little thin. I actually poured that in with some of the other and I'm going to boil it down just a little bit. I'm going to reduce it maybe an inch or two, something like that. Just thicken it up a little bit. So I'm, I might lose one quart with that. Oh, that's, that's wrong math. Actually, there's only seven quarts to a canner load, so it's going to be like two and a half canners. Uh, I might just put some in the refrigerator just to have. We'll see what we get. Otherwise, I might reduce some more of it. All right, I've cooked this particular pot of juice down, uh, reduced it by about an inch because it was up to here before. It's still, you know, kind of thin enough, but I'm good with where it's at because the other batches are a little thicker too. I just got rid of some of the moisture in here, some of the water. This is actually gonna make excellent soup. Okay, so I figured out that my roaster is 18 quarts and I have about 16 quarts of juice. So. I'm gonna put everything into the roaster pan and mix it up that way. I can take it from there and fill my jars. 
Okay, I'm going to add one of my cooler bowls first so I don't get as much splashing with the hot liquid. You guys, this smells amazing. And here's my hot one. Let's hope this all fits in here. The numbers say they're supposed to, but I don't know, I don't think so. Either I miscalculated or this is not 18 quarts. What I'll do is I'll, I'll mix what's here and then can from there and then, then add the rest when I can this up. All right, I'm just gonna gently stir this. I wonder if the 18 quart is the um, main roaster part and not the pan. That could be. And I could possibly have used that. <clears throat> but um, this will be fine. This will be good. So what I'm doing is just making sure that all the different um, spices and the different um, vegetable juices are just all blending well so I can get the flavor that I want and you know you can certainly taste it and see if you wanted to add any more seasoning or anything at this point but I've made this twice already before and I know that this is the seasoning that I like so it works well for me okay my pressure canner ready you can water bath can these too but it takes so much less time with the pressure canner and I prefer using that. So I've got the water, the recommended water in here for this brand. I have a Miro um, 16 quart canner and it calls for two quarts of water. And then I put a little bit of vinegar in here too. And for this batch I am using uh, regular mouth quart jars and they've been hot. You can see that they're steaming. They're all washed and cleaned and hot. Because I'm pressure canning them, they don't need to be sterilized. My uh, V8 juice does not need to be hot. And this I can fill up to about a half inch head space. If you want to take this juice, rather than just having it as a vegetable juice to drink, Make a soup out of it. Add rice or some pasta to it, some noodles. Um, you can add other vegetables if you want to, but they're all in here already. If you want something really quick, in a prepper needs situation, you've got all your vegetables. You can just add some dry pasta to this and cook it down. There's enough liquid in here. It'll help cook the noodles. And um, you'll still have plenty of soup. You could add some canned chicken to this or beef, whatever you'd like. And you have yourself an incredibly delicious, nutritious, hearty meal. All right, then I'm gonna wipe off the rims. I got some juice around here. I like to dry them off too. Helps the lids stick a little bit better. Add the lids in some hot water. Put my rings on, finger tight, and put them in the canner. I'm gonna continue doing this until my canner is full. All right, I have my canner full with seven quarts. So I'm gonna turn the heat on and put my cover on. I have the gasket in here to make sure it fits in there. And then I like to put the plug away from me so that if I'm over the stove or something, or if the plug blows, it will blow into the stove hood and not out into where people are. And then I turn it to where um, the handles line up so it can lock really well. Now the steam vent is right here. I have to wait to allow it to get hot and so this will vent. I need to let that vent 10 minutes and then I can put the weight on it. My elevation is about 1,000 feet and so I have to put it at 15 pounds. And I will show you that when I get to it. Out of the top there, you can see this venting there. And I'm going to put my timer on for 10 minutes because this needs to vent for 10 minutes first. The science behind that is that there's air trapped in here. And so we need to let that air heat up and escape through the vent and then cap it off in order for the pressure to build and properly can your jars. Okay, the timer just went off. 
You can see it's steaming very, very well. I'm double checking to make sure my lock has um, has locked and everything is great. Now this is a pretty simple canner. There's no dial on it. There's no little um, pin that pops up or anything. So uh, each canner is going to be a little bit different. Now this particular weight has a 5, 10, and 15 marks and they're full. And for my altitude, I have to go 15 pounds. Now this is very hot steam. You burn yourself, so use a mitt when you're putting these on. And I put it on like that, and then I wait until the pressure builds up again. It'll start to jiggle. And then I set my timer for 20 minutes. Now for this juice, it doesn't matter if it's pints or quarts, it's still 20 minutes. So whatever you can it, that's what it is. Starting to rattle, it took about five minutes for it to get to that point. And now I can start my timer. I put it on 20 minutes. Right now it's on high. And so I'm gonna turn it down a little bit. You can see the flame going down a little. And every couple minutes, or once a minute or something, I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit more. I want to maintain a rattle for a little bit, but then I want to get to the point where it's only it's only rattling about one to four times a minute. You don't want to reduce the temperature too fast because otherwise that will siphon your jars and it could cause pressure difficulties in there. It could even break a jar. Okay, my 20 minutes is up and I turned off the heat and it took about another half hour for it to depressurize. So you want to wait till it unlocks and all the pressure is released before you take the cover off. If there's any little spraying of steam or anything, it's not ready yet. And then take the cover off and let this sit for five minutes. Allow the jars to get used to the temperatures, but these are all done. Set these on either a wooden board or a towel directly on your countertop because you don't want the surface to be cold when you're putting your hot jars on there. You want to leave a couple inches between each jar. All right. Look at those beautiful jars of V8 juice. All right. All right, I've got at least two more canner loads to go. It's already in the evening. So I'm gonna get working on those. Uh, my canner, I'm gonna take, dump the water and put new water in there so that I have the right level and everything I can start fresh. In the morning, I'll show you all the jars that I got. All right, I have 20 jars that I put up. I have a dozen quart jars. I have seven 26 ounce jars and then I have one pint. This combined with what I've already put up, I have a little over 30 quarts of V8 juice, which is seven and a half gallons, almost eight gallons of V8 juice, which came from like the tail end of my production from the garden, which is just amazing to me. Take care, God bless. Always have hope. Bye-bye.